I'm going to demonstrate how we can measure frequency to a sub 1 hertz resolution with a Yesu FT1000 MP Mark V field, a standard Yesu FT1000 transceiver. The Canadian time a signal station 14670 kilohertz. So the first thing we'll do is tune it into uh, the time signal. And I'm going to put it in the CW mode. It produces a, a heterodyne. So uh, we have it tuned to exactly 14670. And I'll show you what we do next. Here is the, the tone we have heard from uh, the CHU station producing a heterodyne in the radio. And that heterodyne is approximately 740 Point three hertz and the tone from the radio is represented on the oscilloscope here in the red trace and you notice that the red trace is moving slightly to the right and it is also uh, changing in amplitude as a result of uh, the Doppler effect and fading in the atmosphere so that's what's causing the the change in the signal that we see on the red trace uh, which is uh, channel one of the oscilloscope. The yellow trace is channel two of the oscilloscope and it is a reference frequency coming from an audio generator. It's a Heathkit audio generator. It is not disciplined in any way. It's free running. And What I'm going to do now is adjust the audio generator as closely as possible to match the tone of the heterodyne being generated by the FT-1000 radio uh, uh, which is received over the air from, uh, from the Canadian, uh, broad, uh, Canadian time station. So I'm going to adjust the uh, uh, frequency of that uh, oscillator and you notice uh, as I change the frequency of the oscillator uh, channel 1, the red trace uh, appears to uh, change speed and direction. So what we want to do here is synchronize as closely as possible the audio oscillator to the uh, tone being generated by the CHU uh, station. And what we're seeing here is a slight difference in uh, in the frequency caused by the change in atmosphere, and this is a Doppler effect, and is we can't do any better than that. So uh, the frequency now, uh, I don't know if you can see it here at the bottom of the uh, screen, but we have 739.933 uh, hertz. Now what I'll do is change the tuning of the receiver in its minimal amount. I'll change it in one direction and then I'll change it in the other direction and you'll be able to see what happens on the, uh, on the scope. So I've now changed the receive frequency. The receive frequency is set approximately uh, 0.625 Hertz high and you notice that the red trace channel 1 appears to be moving to the right. Now what I'll do is I'll move it in the opposite direction and you can see what happens there. moved it back to exactly 14.67 kilohertz that's where we started and now I'll move it downwards in frequency and now I moved it down by 0.625 hertz and you see that the trace appears to be moving to the left which indicates that uh, 
we are tuned low in frequency. When it's moving, when the channel one, the red trace is moving to the right, we have our frequency tuned too high. And when it's moving to the left, we have our frequency tuned too low. So in this manner, we can determine the frequency of an unknown signal. All we have to do is tune the receiver so that the red trace and the, and the uh, yellow trace become as close to stationary as possible and uh, we'll be able to get a readout on the on the uh, uh, radio dial on the VFO dial of the FT-1000 uh, to uh, to read the accurate uh, frequency and uh, we'll show you how we do that in uh, in the next step here is the VFO tuned to the Canadian time station 14670 kilohertz this this digit here is the thousand digits so it's zero thousand this is the hundreds digit this is the tens digit and and the units digit which would normally go from zero to nine is not seen so as the radio is is built as a radio display works normally you cannot tune to the units position you cannot determine what the final unit of the frequency is that's where this secondary expanded scale is and you notice there's a marker in the middle in the center and then there are little tick marks left and right and in our case here we showed three little marks normally if we tune the VFO and I'll, I'll, I'll tune the VFO exactly to 14670 kilohertz and you notice there's only one little mark is one mark indicating it is zeroed that is the zero position there are 15 ticks and there are little markers for 5, 10, and 15. Each tick represents 0.625 Hertz. So when we tune this to one mark higher, it is now tuned 0.625 Hertz higher than than the frequency indicated by the numerals, the displayed numerals. So we have to add this value to the total value that we read in the VFO display. Always remembering that this last digit is not seen and it is zero. So we're going to have to add 0 0.625 to zero. So the frequency here would be 14 six seven zero 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 decimal six two five so let me move it a little further and you'll get the idea here so if I move it up to the fourth position and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter whether you count to the right or to the left it's uh, the the display uh, indicates um, it just shows you the little tick marks both to the left and the right of center but they're always added this number the number of ticks shown either left or right is just added to the units digit so four tick marks as we have four marks shown now four times 0.625 is equal to 2.5 so the frequency that it is now tuned, the radio is tuned to, is 14.67000. We have to add the 2.5, so it's now 2.5. So we are 2.5 hertz higher than this displayed frequency. And this keeps going until we reach 
the 15th position and now the 15th position is a total of 9.375 Hertz so in this position the VFO reads 14.670009.375 when we move it one more mark we notice notice when we moved it to the 16th position it jumps back to the center and increments the tens digit by one and then we we repeat the same process here with the tens digit if we go below if we go below 14670000 you notice it it starts in the 15th position and now it still works the same way we have to add the total value of these tick marks to this value this value here so that this frequency that is now tuned to is 14.669999.375 and that is how we can use the FT1000 to read frequencies in the sub 1 Hertz scale Thanks for your uh, patience and attention.